Um, how many of you have seen George at the booth, right? Because he's there all the time. George is a really dedicated member of Ubuntu Southern California. Um, he's been here, gosh, so much longer than I have. 12 years. 12 years, yeah. Um, at least, I think, yeah. Yeah, he, he's a real anchor for what happens at the booth and what happens here at UbuCon and so much that happens with Ubuntu in Southern California. And I think, is this your first time talking here? Mm -hmm. Thank you for finally bringing a talk. So George has a tech consulting company where he solves business solutions with open source called Techno Care, no being K-N-O-W. He's very active on LinkedIn if you want to follow him. He posts helpful articles there all the time. I'll get out of the way so he can tell you his story and uh, setting up a computer lab using Ubuntu. Thank you, George. Thank you, Richard. I want to tell you that I am really not that ashamed anymore to tell you I was beside myself. Many years ago, I was on my way north on the 55 freeway. I still remember where I was. I had just gotten out of an interview. It did not go well. I was trying to find some tech jobs. Uh, at the time, I had been newly married. Um, I, I was crying tears. Um, it was bad. I had been doing job searching. I had been uh, going to counseling, getting help. Um, some of the people said, well, I should be a pastor, and I could really witness that. Um, some said I should be a missionary, and I could witness to that, but I was still newly married. I couldn't do that. Um, everybody knew I should be on technology and I could witness to that also. So I just pulled off the road because I really couldn't drive that well. And I was crying and I, I did what I do. I did what I do when I'm in those situations. I prayed. I'm not ashamed to say. And I said, okay. And I was going to have it out with God. I said, okay, you want me to be a missionary? but I can't leave Orange County. You want me to be a pastor, but I don't have a degree. And I should be in technology. This doesn't even make any sense. Do you even know what you're doing? Well, I don't normally talk that way to God, but I, like I said, I was beside myself. Um, I went... I just prayed, and I felt like the Lord really spoke to me. He said, don't worry, I've got the perfect job for you. So I drove on home and did what I needed to do. About three or four days later, I think it was, I got a phone call from Deborah Davis. I don't know if any of you have a friend like my wife and I did in, in a person like Deborah Davis who was so insistent that I could, she, she would not contain herself. She says, you've got to go to the rescue mission and apply for this job. It's a technical job. And uh, you'll be teaching the homeless and the poor job skills. And I, I said, no way. That doesn't even sound interesting. How could you possibly do that? She insisted. She would not let me hang up. So finally I agreed, and I wasn't all that enthusiastic, I have to tell you. I, I went online just long enough to find what the job title was and briefly about it, something about a mobile technology vehicle uh, going to different hotels and uh, teaching job skills and, you know, to the poor. And so I applied. A few days later, I got a call for an interview, much to my surprise. So I went down there, and I was not, again, I wasn't enthusiastic at all. And I got in this interview with, I still remember, Tim Hunter, the HR guy, which is an oxymoron, I won't go there. <laughs> and Shannon, she was the outreach director, and I was... I was interviewing for an outreach job. 
So it was not going well. I wasn't excited. I was, you know, I was just going through the motions, basically. So finally, Tim stops everything, and he says to me, he says, do you understand what this job is about? And I kid you not, he used these exact words. He said, you'd be a missionary in Orange County. I still choke up when I... You'd be a missionary in Orange County. You'd be a pastor to the homeless and the poor. And you'd be teaching job skills and technology to the same people that you're ministering to. You could have bowled me over with a feather. The exact same words I prayed. I paid attention. And it went much better after that. Finally, in the middle of everything, Shannon goes to me. She says, how, she, she, she used one of those either or questions, you know. Would you teach them this way or that way? It was one of those either or questions. I hate those things. And I said, oh, no, no, no. And to see... To see how unexcited I was, I didn't even mention that I had already been doing this at a, at, a, um, at a church, a local church for some of the some of the poor in the area. I said, oh, no, no, neither one of those would work because of this and that. And I told them about learning disabilities, and she started taking notes. She started taking notes, and I was just like, Wow. So they were still putting this thing together. It was a fifth wheel trailer. They were still putting it together when I, when I arrived. And I was just flabbergasted. I learned how to drive it. Um, it had a satellite connection to the internet on top. Let's see how much time I have. Oh good, I'm plenty. And um, so we had a satellite connection to the internet. That was pretty cool. Full decked out computers with a server, uh, server rack, and five workstations. The back, you can see the back there folded down. Uh, it was uh, basically a toy hauler converted into a classroom and the couch for uh, counseling and talking to people. And you can see the computers better there. So we went to outreach events and, and stuff like that, and I, I just helped people. And um, it was, these are some of the clients uh, I was able to help. This was at an outreach event. Um, the uh, mission went to uh, uh, different uh, hotels and places because they'd found that a lot of homeless were staying at hotels from time to time and uh, they would give assistance and help. So uh, this was an outreach event and you can see uh, some of the clients here and um, just you know kids so there's uh, some clients on, uh, sitting on the couch there. And uh, it was a really big blessing. So I had a huge advantage in that um, I had the parameters set up for me already. Uh, they had the clients already chosen for me. They had a program already set pretty much. All I had to do was set up the learning. So it's really important to identify objectives and needs. If that's not done for you, then you're going to have to do that. That's one of the many things that you're going to have to do. Okay? Uh, you can do that a lot of different ways. Um, if you're familiar with the community, that's helpful. All right? Um, and that's going to, that's going to be a, make a big um, impact on everything else that you have to do and choose. Okay, you can take formal or informal surveys. Hopefully, you have some help doing that. 
You can ask educators. Uh, the rescue mission read newspaper accounts and talked to some of the people in the area. That's how they chose uh, my audience or my clientele. Um, ask, of course, about computer literacy. Uh, a lot of times they'll just say, you know, I'm, I'm computer illiterate. And you'll hear that a lot. Also, location and infrastructure is really, really important. I had my vehicle, so again, I had parameters already defined for me, but I had been doing this in local churches and libraries already. So with the job, I had to um, curtail a lot of that, but I started some labs later after I left the rescue mission. All right? So you're going to need to know things like setting computers up, are you going to bring them with you? Do you have a place to leave them? Um, all that is very important. Do you have a lot of power? Do you have access to the internet? Those things are key. If you can set them up, that's always... If you can set them up and leave them, like I left them uh, later on, I left them in a, in a Huntington Beach church. I was able to leave them in a lab situation. Uh, all I had was a long desk, uh, like the conference desks we have in there, and um, my Ubuntu logo on the side because I, I, I didn't want to do things illegally. So I used uh, Ubuntu, uh, worked very well. Um, so obviously that's going to be a, a key element. Uh, what is your location? Um, and, you know, if you have to bring laptops in, then you're going to have to allow for time for that. And there's uh, other things that you need to uh, consider also. Equipment. When I started my first lab, I said, this is not a problem. This is, this is what I'm good at. I build computers. I've built hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And uh, I put a lot of uh, Ubuntu on them. And uh, they worked well. Well, I later found out that I, I had two pallets of computers donated to me in parts and pieces. I thought, this is going to be great. Well, guess what I found out? I found out that some of the parts didn't match other parts. And, uh, you know, this wasn't compatible with that. And it became a nightmare. And uh, the church sure didn't like it. So if you can get something donated completely, you'd be surprised at how generous people are. And companies, too. Uh, HP was a great provider uh, for me, uh, providing even some small form factor uh, PCs that were very, very helpful. Also... Uh, you know, church, uh, yeah, churches sometimes came up with some old PCs, but that didn't always work out all that well. So probably more about that later. Curriculum development. This was, um, this was really, really ongoing. Um, there was just so much to learn. And uh, developing your own curriculum, curriculum, if I can speak, um, it's challenging. Um, but there is a whole bunch of books out there uh, written probably for your audience. So just go over those. And, of course, you can do all the searches online. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to call me or, or email me. I'll be more than happy to help. Uh, get an, a lab started. It's very, very exciting. Instructional strategies. A lot of people are in trouble with their jobs and careers because they have trouble learning. A lot of them are like I was. I had ADHD. I still do, actually. You never get over it. It's very, very difficult. My daughter still swears that I'm in the spectrum of autism, although I haven't been tested. 
And I had terrible from, trouble learning. That's why I loved computers so much. They could teach me, and they would repeat it and not get mad at me. So instructional strategies are really important. Things like, um, I, I use the Socrat uh, Socratic method a lot. You know, just asking them back what the question is. For example, um, what is a server? A server is a computer that serves something. It might serve web pages. It might serve email. Make it simple. Make it understandable. Relate it to something they already know. So hopefully that will help. I think that's one of the primary methods I used. So I define things a lot that way. Overcoming challenges. Oh, there's always challenges. You're going to have to get computers donated. You're going to have to, if you're shy, get somebody to help you or overcome it like I did. I did not like to knock on doors and, and do that, but it's necessary to go in front of people and to talk to them and say, these are my needs. I need a volunteer uh, to help put this lab together. I need a, a, a volunteer to help set up the computers. Whatever, okay? I need, I need computers. I need whatever the, the need is. Sometimes you just need assistance, especially if you, were, if you had a challenging group like I did. Someone just to be there, okay? Really, really important. Procuring, like I said, procuring equipment can be a challenge. Logistics and time and dealing with the church, with the venue, with the library. There's lots of places, you know, coffee shops. Uh, uh, we used to have um, events over at um, Panera, Panera Bread and stuff like that. We just carved out a little corner and they were very receptive to us. And we had something to eat too. So that was pretty cool. So you have to speak to people and just overcome the shyness. Uh, and uh, th for me, that was very helpful to be so passionate about what I did. Very, very important. Because engaging the community is, you know, will keep you alive. And uh, that's why, also why I love being an advocate for Ubuntu, because it's cool. It's really, really a wonderful operating system and a great community that reaches out to you. So please, um, again, don't, don't be afraid to uh, email me. I'll, I'll try to respond uh, right away if I can. So, I don't think, for me anyway, there's anything more rewarding than reaching out and helping people to succeed. And I challenge you to to take a crack at it. It is great. And uh, find the support you need. If you, again, if you need any help, please reach out to me by way of email. I'll be glad to do that. I, there's so much more I could talk about, but I, I'd rather just take questions if that's okay. And um, I have only a few minutes left anyway. So. Yeah, we, get about, uh, we can take up to like another eight minutes for questions that we give a 15 minute Great. break. Yeah. So let's take some. I Anybody have, have any you. questions? May I start on the questions? We got another one here from Liz. Um, but I'm going first because I got the mic. Uh, <laughs> when you got the, the, when HP got computers to you, the small form factors, how did you, how did that happen? Did you reach out to them or, or was that through another organization? You know, so many different ways. Like I said, Richard, one of the things I did was uh, I did a lot of speaking uh, at uh, churches and events, and everybody knew what I did. And I had, at first, I had a lot of computers donated. Like I said, I had like two pallets at least of computers. And, you know, some of those were discarded because they couldn't use them anymore. So I took those. I figured I could fix them. But it took so many hours to do that 
that I finally abandoned that method and went and sought uh, computers uh, through different companies and things like that. Uh, I found out that the companies that were leasing computers uh, would sometimes sell them, and uh, those were great because they would still work. Uh, they had no hard drives. All I had to do was replace the hard drive through a donation or whatever, and I was off and running. Does that answer your question? Hey, George. Hi. Um, as you probably know, I, I help with a nonprofit in San Francisco. I can barely hear oh, you. Sorry. sorry. I help with a nonprofit in San Francisco, Partimus. Um, and so we're kind of relaunching post pandemic because we had to shut a lot of operations down. Yes. Um, so one of the challenges we've come up with, we used to have a boot server that would install our server, our, our computers for us, but we don't have that anymore. And instead of creating a new one, we kind of have just been doing installs with put a USB stick in and install. How do you do the individual installs? Well, I've always used like a permanent uh, setup pretty much. Uh, I've, uh, as until recently, I haven't had any... Um, laptops uh, to set up. So I've had to use uh, permanent installations and they've usually been three to five computers, which is pretty much all I can handle anyway. Um, so I would just, I would boot into the machine and, and do it that way. But now there's like uh, virtual machines and you know, I would, I would probably go virtual or something similar or an image. It doesn't take that long. Okay, and that gets to the second part of my question is, for the environment itself, when people are using the computers, are, you, are they doing guest sessions or are you using just, they just log in with a username and password or how are you doing that? Because you don't want people downloading things on the computer and then the next person finds weird stuff on there. Are you doing anything to manage the That's environment? That's a very good question. I have not had that problem because I'm using a lot of volunteers to monitor and uh, they very seldom... Uh, and, and if they're using the internet, they're probably, they're usually with, with what, what I'm doing, they're using, using it under supervision, if I can even talk. So I hope that answers your question. But yeah, if, what I would do is I would, I would do a re-image real quick uh, if, if they're unattended and you have a lot of people or a large lab. That's what I would do. Any other questions? Yes, we do. Would you have a setup with the students where it's like they have effectively kind of one day to learn what they're doing or would it be extended? And then, you know, because how do you teach all of this if it's a very like mobile homeless group, right? Oh, that's so good. how did you determine, okay, we're going to teach this at this location for a week or was it just get as much as you can in, in a day? No, it would be, uh, it'd be once a week. Uh, usually, because I couldn't afford the time uh, more than that. But that's a great question because, um, yeah, it depends on what you're doing. The mission wanted me to do uh, Microsoft certification, which was very, very hard because the population was so uh, sporadic. And uh, one of the problems, of course, finding a job is if, if you're not able to be consistent. So all those things have to be evaluated. And I had lots of, um, lots of different tests I gave them, I, very unique tests. Like, for example, uh, when I was doing job placement, I had those uh, little rings and, and uh, puzzles. You know, those little puzzles that you try to find out how to open them or take the ring off or, or whatever. I used those to find out not only their dexterity, but if they had an aptitude for uh, mechanics. So I'd use unconventional things like that. They didn't even know oftentimes they were being tested. So um, that, I, would, I would do that kind of thing. I hopefully that answers your question. Okay. We might squeeze in one more mess, uh, question if we have one. Um, sorry, this isn't really a, a question per se. Uh, I just, I was asking Yuji if he could announce it on the next one. Uh, I'm not on the schedule, but I am speaking at five, I believe, in here today about curriculum and about uh, 
technical certification for Ubuntu and about how we developed that. And it sounds like that would have been very helpful for you when you were starting out with the computer lab. And I would love to talk to you a little bit more about your curriculum and how that fits in with our current technical certification program. And if there's anybody in here who is doing educational work and you would be interested in free uh, access to testing, please just let me know. So sorry about that. This is why. No, that's that was. No, that that's that. We should have, could have done that ourselves on your behalf because we're really glad to have you here to do that today. So thank you for bringing that at five o'clock and letting us know right yeah, now. Yeah, thank you so much. This is what I love about scale. Isn't it great? All right. Can we and have a round of applause for George? 